Back to the Native American display? Not quite. Actually, this is a copy of a carved Indian used to advertise cigars or tobacco. Now, where would you find this? Maybe here, in Woodlift's novelty store. Yep, this is the place to get the fixings to roll your own cigarettes as proudly acclaimed on the side of the store. You might think of this as one of the early billboards. Made out of a railroad tie, this totem pole was donated in the name of an association of retired Fallon sailors of the Fleet Reserve Silver Dollar Branch number 192. Among other carvings, it depicts an eagle and an Indian chief. Tobacco products advertised, and tobacco products we find in abundance, but cowboy and pioneer does not survive on tobacco alone. Our store is well stocked with the basic commodities like potatoes by the sackful. And for the cook, whether in the kitchen or in the wagon, a complete selection of spices are stocked. You buy your beans and grind them on the spot. Then the only way to get coffee today the way for coffee connoisseurs. And the outer man was not forgotten. The latest fashion shipped by Wagon Express from St. Louis. The store was more than a place to buy what you needed. It was the communications center of the area. This was actually a working post office in the town of Hazen, about 15 miles west of Fallon. The local store, a place of physical warmth and the warmth of friends and neighbors getting together to exchange the latest news and gossip. Of course, there were those who had their own ideas of finding warmth and the proprietor made sure that their needs were also met. Those glass bottles were displayed prominently for those who felt the need. And yes, glass in bottles and shapes was an important commodity of the time. And how many bottles on the wall? Well, we are back at the ranch, or er, museum, to find that bottles, actually glass containers of all types, are well represented here. Yes, I know the question is how many bottles of beer? Well, no bottles of beer, but varied beer bottles, yes. There was a time when such artifacts could be found and picked up at various obscure ghost towns in Nevada in years past, something you can't do today without running afoul of the law. A number of these bottles came from Doris Drum, who found, bought, and traded them in the 1930s through the 50s. Doris Drum was very active in the founding of Churchill County Museum and had a major impact on the collection we see today. Here you can see some of the bottles took on quite varied shapes. The center one, celebrated Indian herb bitters. On the left, the celebrated Indian herb bitters bottle. On the right, well, not quite sure what this contained. Maybe fish oil? the bottle being in the shape of a fish. Pickles in a cathedral? Well, these are called cathedral pickle bottles, 
but I don't know if that refers to the type of bottle or brand of a pickle. Yes, Junior, milk didn't always come in cartons or plastic. It was delivered to your doorstep in bottles. But on a cold day, you had to get it in quickly, or the milk would freeze and expand, popping out the top in a cap of white ice. This is a bottle, really. One of the oddest I have seen, looking like a pretzel. Yep, that's what it's called, the pretzel bottle. But the glass exhibits go well beyond that of just bottles. How about these vases of carnival glass? Each one has a distinctive and named design. For instance, you can just see those April showers down the sides here. Star Medallion How about some feathers? Well, at least that is what this is named. Or how about a touch of purple? Something extremely unusual. What started out as a way to make glass clear, to take unwanted colors out caused by iron in the sand, in the long run had an entirely unexpected result. To take the unwanted colors out, manganese was added to the clear glass recipe, which worked fine at first, but then a strange thing happened. As it was exposed to the sun for extended periods, the ultraviolet rays started to turn the glass purple. The more sun and or the more manganese, the more intense the color. The manganese came from Germany and World War I put a stop to that import. I would assume that's why you don't see many purple power meters these days. It and lead crystal are the only glass products in the world that such changes of color take place under direct sunlight. As mentioned, a basic ingredient of glass is sand. No shortages of that in the desert, sand, and rocks. <laughs> 